Hello everyone, The Flying Scotsman here. Welcome to this episode of The Flying Scotsman Christmas. Now, given the amount of time that um, I've basically spent working here, I guess it was inevitable that I had to do a Retro Fest episode at Christmas. Um, although it was a close call, but um, I've decided to um, film this one here. Now, the title is still correct. I'm still planning on doing a review of Windows 95 OSR 2.5C with Microsoft Plus. But um, I've wanted for a while to power up this machine and see what she can do, to be honest, because it's kind of taken a back burner. But I think today <clears throat> I would like to concentrate my efforts on this computer. So before we get in, around to installing Windows 95 OSR 2.5C with Microsoft Plus on it, I think we'll give it a wee upgrade. So I've managed to procure a slightly yellowed but still good zip drive, zip 100 drive, in a 5 and a quarter inch to 3.5 inch bracket. And what I'm planning to do is install it in here. Windows 95, I think, um, is better with zip drives anyway than with USB storage. So, certainly given that, I think that uh, this upgrade is definitely going to be very useful. And then that will mean that um, all the pre-XP machines will have zip drives. So, I guess it's time for the usual fare of uh, taking the lid off the case. Right, so I got, um, I got sidetracked there, um, had some other work to do in the office, but then such as the way of these things. So, in order to get the zip drive in, what I'm going to do very quickly is just take, well, just put uh, the CD-ROM drive to one side because this process is going to be quite similar to <coughs> this process is going to be quite similar to um, that which I used to install the zip drive in the Grampian Electronics machine. Except that um, instead of using a three and a half inch drive bay, I'm actually using the full five quarter inch. Right. these desktops. So I think um, I think there's screws on both sides. Nightmare. There we go. So Again, well, <laughs> put more drives to one side. Ah, why not? And then we've got these two screws here for the uh, CD drive. Well, it's about bloody time. I had to use, um, I had to borrow the screwdriver from the office as it's thinner, but um, this screwdriver has another issue. Yeah. Yeah, it's a uh, It's a pretty loose, if I'm going to be completely honest. So, um, anyway. Back to what we're doing here. <laughs> we're uh, making a space for the zip drive to live. So, let's do that now. It's going to be a shame to lose this uh, 
blue Design for Windows 95 and NT sticker. It's actually not a sticker at all and has been basically uh, sprayed or etched onto the uh, panel there. That is a shame. Ah, oh, well. Progress and all that. So now I guess it's time to try and break this metal blanking plate and I've got to be honest it doesn't want to come off but then again like I said before I've borrowed the office's toolkit and it has a couple more toys in it than what mine does <laughs> So, And there we go. We've got it out. We better metal there. So now we have the zip drive. And what I want to do is I want to set that to slave. So what I will do is I'll have a look on here how to set it. So and just like the other zip drive, I've just remembered it wants no jumpers to be slave. So, let's just liberate this jumper. Try and find a nice, safe place to keep it. So and the next question is, do I have enough Molex connectors? And the answer is actually, yes I do. So that's actually really quite lucky. I guess what I can do here is, um, plug Plug the zip drive in, down here, plastics on that connector are really quite sharp. Um, and then I have um, another channel on this um, ID cable which is good. So I'll just attempt to plug this in. And I, and I will actually need to plug in the CD-ROM drive just to uh, to check my work, obviously. Oh, come on. So that's the zip drive plugged in as far as I can ascertain. <clears throat> so like I said, I just want to plug in the uh, CD-ROM drive. The CD-ROM. People used to call it back in the day. <clears throat> okay, so 
got drives plugged in. So let's, um, well, let's check we're working. So I just want to hit pause break until the monitor warms up. Whoop, 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 whoop. Okay, that didn't work. <coughs> Sorry you all saw it, but I didn't. Fujitsu hard drive, nothing. Ah, brilliant. Ah, we'll let it start up. Why not? I could secure the zip drive because um, I think I will actually, I think I will secure it on the left side, well, depending on if it works obviously, and that's something that we can test. Bollocks. So now it's time for the main part of this video, and that is Windows 95 OSR 2.5 with Plus. Now, thinking about it, I have heard tell of copies of Windows 95 that came pre-installed with Plus, but um, for the most part, I, I, I always thought that that was just the uh, OEM version, the um, RTM version that would uh, do that. And to be honest, unless I was working with a mid-90s Packard Bell that had it as part of its install image, I really don't use Windows 95 OEM, uh, RTM. So... It'll be quite interesting to see what this is like with the OSR 2.5 version. So that would probably give... I mean, if... if You know, if, if I've got this right, I should be getting both Microsoft Plus and the Active Desktop Update. Which essentially means... Basically get a lot of the goodies that come with Windows 98 on Windows 95. I remember Windows 98 coming with desktop themes and for the longest time thinking that that was a new thing that came with Windows 98. And then obviously I got to know about Microsoft Plus and, you know, it's like, oh, so actually this exists. And you can have desktop themes on Windows 95 and the pinball game, the um, 3D pinball which didn't come with um, Windows 98 at all. But um, Maxis did a pinball game. I think it was, uh, I can't even mind what it was called. I'm gonna kick myself when, I'm, when I find out. But um, that has the, that is the original, um, that is the original birthplace of the uh, Space Cadet pinball table that uh, we, know and love so well thanks to um well to be honest for most of us thanks to windows xp all right i'm just going to put this floppy disk in and i'm going to start the machine up from it see microsoft plus was never something that a lot of people had that i knew in fact i i don't believe i know anyone who had microsoft plus and i i certainly didn't get a play about with it So, you know, that's, <coughs> I mean, that's why I wasn't aware, really, of its existence until, you know, obviously, you know, finding out about Windows 95, reading into it, and all that kind of stuff. And I had much less of an idea that uh, Windows 98 Plus existed. Hey. 
a lot of the features of Microsoft Plus 95 actually, you know, did filter into newer versions of Windows 95. Things like the, um, things like uh, Drive Space, I think was uh, part of Microsoft Plus originally. Um, and the uh, Task Scheduler, um, Microsoft Plus. Task Scheduler, that originally came as part of Microsoft Plus, but later was bundled in with uh, Internet Explorer. Okay. So, now, what we are doing is, um, you know, the usual kind of tricks of format, reinstall, all that good stuff. Plus, I've uh, inserted the install CD into the CD drive. Uh. Okay. So, what I'm going to do now, obviously, is So away we go, we're just copying files. So obviously this part will probably take quite a bit longer than it would on a off of a normal Windows 95 CD because not only has it got um, Microsoft Plus to copy, but it's got Internet Explorer 4, and then, and then you've got the Windows 95 files as well. So, yeah, this uh, this could take a bit. Oh, good, it's finally done. <laughs> nah, it didn't really take that long. But as is the way with these things. It's um, getting to 3 o'clock, so I'm not going to have as much time as I was wanting. It's quite funny. Remember in my Encarta video, I was talking about going to have to end the video quickly to, in order to go to the office. Well, now we're back to the usual ending the video quickly to leave the office. Right. So now we're going to start Windows 95 setup. See if the installation is different or offers any different options. I must admit, I do like these Olivetti mice, but I think, to be honest, the problem I'm experiencing is actually with the table being a bit lumpy bumpy it's even stopping the optical mice from working properly so I'm gonna need to get some mouse mats no I do not wish to install in Windows.000 why don't you start off okay just put a product key in so there we are. So once again we need to um, identify all the components in the computer. Nice.
Well, as for setup options, it's not really that much different to regular Windows 95 OSR 2.5. However, a full install of Windows 95 is an everything checked is now 206.2 megabytes. So it certainly has grown quite exponentially, but then you would expect it to. Uh, so we don't want any daft netware business. I don't think we really need net be uh, net buoy. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, net buoy. Right? This mouse is. Uh, Getting all over the shop for it. Well, it's not even moving. It's not sure if it's not sure if mouse or desk. So anyway, let's set up uh, the machine. I think I set this one up as five. Work group retro fest. Okay, ATI VGA Wonder. This machine is using a British keyboard and a plug and play monitor. So there we have it. It's now ready to go. It's going to install. Now, one thing I will tell you about while this is installing is. Um, well, I've decided to bring my Microsoft uh, 40 joystick key. I forget what this is called, but Sidewinder 3D Pro or something like that. Um, and the reason for that is, well, I think it might find better use here than it would at my place. And in fact, we have a Windows 95 machine that needs a game port joystick. So... What I will do while this is installing is I'll plug this in. So that's the joypad plugged in. <laughs> How strange does this look? <laughs> Research machines with a game controller next to it. That's just not really right, is it? <laughs> High Treason was telling me about a piece of software, I forget what it was called now, but um, it was uh, a bit of software that um, I think his school or something used to install on to those machines. And, you know, basically it, it locked down Windows so much. My school had a similar bit of software that they used called Winlock. Um, and it was on a Windows 3.1 laptop that I was given by them. It was an old... Uh, uh, no, it wasn't. It was an old MyTac, actually. Um, I think it was a 386, if I remember rightly. It had, um, it had 4 megs of RAM on it. Um, I used to run... I did actually used to run Windows 3.1. It ran. I mean, it was a bit slow, but it... It certainly ran, and I got Office 4.2 on there, and, uh, and this machine had an 81 megabyte hard drive as well. Ugh, oh, loved it. And now Windows 95 is uh, basically at the end of um, the file copy phase. So let's see what it does next. Apart from that. I've got a. Every time I install Windows 95 on, on something, I've got to get that uh, getting ready to start Windows for the first time desktop background captured. Uh, background? Uh, startup screen. 
You know what, I don't, I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. I could be saying anything. Right, okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to type my password in. So now we're just setting up uh, everything that needs set up. Set the time zone. I'm just, actually what I want to do is check the date and time because, uh, yep, let's keep in time. Just like the ox and lamb. Para pa pam pam. Hey, it's Christmas time. <laughs> so now we're starting Windows 95 and going into the desktop for the first time. I mean, obviously, everything's going to be in 16 colours because uh, I'll need to install some drivers and stuff like that. Um, okay, let's find the plug and play monitor, that's good. Ah, oh, Windows 95 setup. Windows 95 needs more information to finish customising your computer. And before I do that, I want to see what's uh, what's been installed, if anything. Okay, so, so far Microsoft Plus hasn't been installed. So, I'm going to go next. I'm going to follow all these prompts to install Internet Explorer 4. So now it's backing up configuration copying files. Right, this will take some time. So, Internet Explorer has, well, kind of finished installing. And now it's saying preparing to run Internet Explorer 4.0. So, here we are. <laughs> the active desktop. Nice. So we now get to try the Microsoft network as well. I've got to be honest though, I'm not seeing any Microsoft Plus. I have to be honest. Um, so I do wonder what all that's about. That said, I do think the machine itself will benefit from having Windows 95 OSR 2.5 installed. Given that it is you know, 1999 machine, so it's a bit newer than what Windows 95 would normally be used to. Okay. So let's get some drivers installed. Oh, 
Oh, look, there's a zip drive. I, I will actually need to bring in AmigaWare 1.1. So, first things first, I will get some driver in drivers installed and then I will be back. So now we are about ready to um, get this machine up and running on the network. And after that, there's a couple of things that I need to have a look at. So, to connect Windows 95 to a domain, what you do is, well, make sure your computer is plugged into the network and that the server is up and running and switched on. Then, on your Windows 95 desktop, right-click Network Neighborhood, select Properties, and then go to Client for Microsoft Networks, click Properties, and then check the box labeled Log on to Windows Domain. When you log on, um, when you log on, your personal your password will be verified uh, on a Windows NT domain. That's absolutely fine. So, what's the name of the domain? No, that was not an ABBA song. Retrofest. Leave the rest of the sentence as they are. You know what? I will uh, make this machine visible and file printer sharing. Not that there's any printers connected. So, we're getting there. We are getting there. All the drivers are installed. Uh, the computers, well, all the main drivers for running the system are installed. The computer is getting ready to join the uh, a domain. And just got one more well got one driver that we need to deal with and that is USB because Windows 95 OSR 2.1 naturally some versions of Windows 95 B if I'm honest um, actually did have did actually come with um, USB support so I'm gonna install that support now but now we're on the network, you can see the uh, enter network password dialog is there and it's um, enter the network password for Microsoft networking and you've got username, password and domain field. So the domain field is filled in. Okay, so we are now on the network, and actually I think it's this mouse that could be slightly dodgy. I've got it running on a mouse mat that I've nicked from the, um, the mesh. So before I do anything, what I want to do is go on to my network area where I keep all the applications and what have you. And... Um, I want to install... I want to install and run mouse pointers. Um, I do plan to install Internet Explorer 5 on this machine by the way because I, I feel that it can stabilize the active desktop environment by quite a way and just well I've been through that before it's just a lot more pleasant. Anyway so let's have a look at well let's have a look at the CD. Ah you see that Microsoft Plus is on the CD. So there it is. I have a horrible feeling that if I were to install this version of Plus, it would actually... Uh, it would actually... Um, mess up all of, all of the icons like. So as, 
I suspected these icons have went back to the horrible more windows kind of ones. Ugh, they look terrible. They look awful. Um, so I'm going to set the machine back to 16 color icons. Oh my goodness. However, what we can do um, is we can install USB. So to do that, we need to go onto the Windows 95 CD and I think uh, we need to go into other and then updates. You can see we've got card bus, DirectX 5, Ultra DMA and USB. So first off I think we need to install the first USB update. For some reason, it likes to run ScanDisk. It's um, when it does this. So, what's happened here is um, the machine has been the machine shut down. Well, the machine has uh, restarted, and it'll run through a couple of things as it restarts to do with setting up the uh, USB ports. There we go. So it looks a wee bit more presentable. And the next thing we need to do is run the second update. So USB support has now been installed. However, I still need to install the USB driver. Okay guys, well, it's getting a bit late, but um, I'm going to see if I have enough time to run a playthrough. Well, not an actual playthrough, for goodness sakes, no. Um, but, um, I mean, this would be the first time I've opened this uh, machine up to games, so uh, let's... Uh, Let's actually see if um, it'll work. I got um, a copy of Rayman. I decided to buy one for the Retrofest because, um, you know, I mean, it is a game that I kind of like playing. And uh, you know, one afternoon I thought I was going to have a bit of time to kill, so I bought myself a copy and I thought, well, actually, I'm going to get it. You know, I'll get them an actual copy. So, yeah. So, we're going to auto-detect the sound card. Perfect. Yeah, that sounds about fine for me. If a wee bit, um... Perfect. Yep. Save. Play. To be honest, I'm not going to use a joystick at the joypad because I forgot that that one... The uh, D-pad is mounted um, a wee bit uh, diagonally, so it's not really the greatest thing in the world. Wait a minute. Oh no, that is volume. So this is, <clears throat> obviously, you know, in, in the new year I will obviously be showing this machine and, and the other ones playing more games, different games. And we're going to use, um, we're 
we're going to use um, Phil's Computer Lab's uh, test bench thing. There we go. Just kind of cheated. <laughs> I think at some point I am going to need to get some, some of the more classic games for these systems. You know, instead of just things from 1998. <clears throat> well, the mid to late 90s, I should say. Yeah, see, even the computer agrees. We need some, we need some more gams. Um, you know what? I'm not even going to bother with him. That works. So there we go. Damn it. Yeah. So what I will do is I will get us through I'll get us through this level. You've all seen me play with Rayman probably about a million times. So, because it's Christmas, I'll run, I'll run a benchmark. You know, for those who, for those of you who like to quantify stuff. To run this DOS bench, what I'm going to do here is, um, and, and um, again, shout out to, you know, and, and credit to Phil's Computer Lab. For um, for DOS bench, so so I'm going to run DOS bench dot b eighty. Um, so I'm guessing I'm going to run. James, which one do I run? Let's let's run this. <laughs> Sorry about the flickering of the screen. So this is uh, running two four one three. I don't know if that means anything to anyone because it certainly means absolutely nothing to me. So what do I do? Just run this indefinitely? Is that what I do? Okay. Um, Chris 3D's SVGA benchmark. Please wait five seconds. It was a wee bit of tearing, but it's actually really quite buttery smooth.
Your computer received a Chris's bench score of 81.3. That is 48.8 frames per second. Press any key to continue. Um, so, PC Blogger benchmark. So I'm not entirely sure what this is testing, whether it's uh, 2D, I think it is, probably has to be actually because I'm pr pretty sure I've ran this on the desk pro so it would have to be 2D, whoopsie. But I must say this monitor does give out quite a nice clear picture, I'm, I'm quite impressed actually for a monitor that's uh, you know, quite old. You know, I'm not sure if it was used with this computer, and if it was, it will have been on most days <clears throat> in school classrooms. So that seems to run. So, um, so let's have a look now at um, Doom. Um, timed 21, uh, 2134 uh, geometrics and 743 rail checks. Again, you know, if anyone, you know, if that means anything to anyone, that's absolutely fine. Um, I'm going to do Quake at uh, 640 by 480 because why not? <laughs> I'm not the one that's playing it. I love how, I love how dark this brightness is. But I mean, Quake seems to be running fine. And Quake's one of those games that ultimately does look a lot better on uh, on a three D FX machine. It's uh, a bit of a shame that um, you know you've got a you know the it's. And I mean, stop me if I'm wrong, but I mean, the original Quake, I don't think, has a direct 3D port. Neither does the original Tomb Raider. I mean, I know you can use, um, I know you can use Glide emulation to, you know, get these games to work. But I mean, that, that just seems to be really quite messy, if I'm honest. But I mean, if anyone if anyone knows any different, then please feel free to tell me because I mean, obviously, you know, I've got a bunch of uh, you know kind of middling '90s games, you know, that were kind of smack in the middle of the 3D FX boom, you know, that I'd like to play on my own equipment. There we go. Um. So, I think, um, <laughs> I can't even read any of this, um, all I can get is 19.2 uh, frames per second uh, over uh, 69.5, uh, 969 frames over 63.8 seconds, 15, uh, 17.3, sorry, 19.2 frames per second. So. I don't know if anyone, if anyone wants to pause the video and read this, go right ahead. Right. So let's get out of that. And... <clears throat> if we have a look at um, system information, um, IBM AT are compatible. BIOS award, award BIOS, January the 19th, 1999, um, Pentium, 397 megahertz, so 350, come on, 
And um, Billy, uh, Billy Corr, Road Geek, was just telling me actually that uh, this board is very similar to the one that he had in his Carolina Flyer Mark I. Um, obviously now he's he's up he's updated it and got I think it was an Intel board and he's put a Pentium three six hundred in it, but uh, when it was still a Pentium two, he had done a, a open board that was very similar to this one. I think whereas mine says the BC, his was the LC, or could have been vice versa. So this is just kind of stuff about the computer and if we have a look at the CPU speed this computer <laughs> oh my goodness it's <laughs> look at what it's comparing it to Intel Pentium Intel Pentium 66 Intel 486 DX33 Intel 386 DX33 so yeah it, you know it makes sense that this would be just a wee bit faster. Unable to identify physical disk. Well, it's there, and you're running from it, you feel. So, I'm just going to quickly hit landmark speed test. This computer performs like a 340 MHz AT with a 505... 555 MHz, 82-87. <laughs> First in PC testing since 1981. So, yeah. I think, um, I think this machine's fast enough for this benchmark. So, with that all said, I think it's time for me to conclude this video by putting the computer into standby. I think, yeah, that's that's exactly what I was after. I don't think there's actually a way... Oh, yeah, maybe there is. There you go. <laughs> so turning this machine off. Um, and thus concluding this video. So thank you all for watching. And um, this is the RM Accelerator running Windows 95 OSR 2.5C with Plus. So please join me tomorrow when we will be taking a look at another Pentium 2 system, the Compact Presario 4620. Cheerio, bye.